Let's start with a question. I will describe a situation for you, and you, to, you will start to make an educated guess just right after. Let's try this. Masses of people are driven out of their jobs by machines. They queue at the new big companies for labor jobs for a few bucks per hour, no benefits, no health insurance. The society sees soaring inequality and social unrest is building up. Any guesses? It's not that difficult. So it's either 2016 or it's 1778 in England or 1788 in France. So here we go again. Society changes to a new era and we seem to have the same problems again. We have a social disconnect between the elites and the general population. We have rising inequality. And we have massive problems of people planning their own life, their finances, their income and work. All this displays in um, voting results where we are reminded of the darkest times of our history sometime recently. It displays in hate speech on the internet and in a divided society. People turn to radical leaders because they feel democracy hasn't delivered. So what, what are the eras that we are actually talking about here? Every time that the society moves to a new era, it seems that old organizations are outperformed by newer ones. So today, the heavy silo, asset-owning in industrial society structure is disrupted and outperformed by the clearly more lightweight asset sharing networks. But wait, what about government? Does government have disruption as well? Well, if you look at the last turn of eras, monarchies were disrupted by democracies. And this last disruption of government looked like this. Not an exactly peaceful endeavor, right? So what can we do to prevent such an escalation this time? I think there may be three things that could be considered, and this is what I propose to you. Let's develop this together. The first thing is what society can do. So society needs a new system. The old one doesn't work anymore. But what's a system? Well, a system is, for instance, a social contract. And the last social contract was formulated just before the French Revolution. It defined the rights of the citizens, and it defined and laid out the principles of democracy. There was revolutionary back then because the state of government was still a monarchy, so democracy was something revolutionary. So what society can do is to move to a new system. And how can this look like? Meanwhile, society has changed. Well, from the French Revolution to today, just a little bit. The economy has changed the way we work. What do we need to change here? The old social contract, the last one, concentrated and focused very much on the rights and duties of the individual. So it was all about me. Okay. Sounds fine, right? Me is fine. But in a complex network society, we see that there is division. We may need to add some responsibility and solidarity for each other. So my suggestion, what to do is
So let's change to we. But we need to learn this. We are socialized to compete, not to unite. You know, in industrial society, we learned that competition is good for business. Today, if you like, say, a graphics designer, and you're out there in, on the web with your own website, you learn that cooperating with your peers to make better visibility for everyone is going to be working better for you. So we realize in network society, it says cooperation is good for business. Another example, there are experiments with three-year-olds and they are helping each other through a set of tasks. In the same experiment, the seven-year-olds, they already stand there and watch each other fail. What happened in the meantime? You know, we need to preserve this natural helpfulness of our children instead of socializing them for sheer competition and also ignorance. So what can we do? The next point that I'm coming to is what government can do. Well, if government is being disrupted, it can disrupt itself as well. So, hey, government, disrupt yourself. Sounds stupid, right? Well, maybe isn't. Who wants to disrupt government this time? Well, current government bashing suggests that government cannot do the job right. They're called inefficient and expensive. And private sector says they can do the job better and they want to take over government services. Question. Are we seriously saying that, say, Google, Facebook, or Amazon, they will now look after the decent rights of the citizens, of their decent work conditions, and pay? Are we seriously saying that like platform companies, they will now suddenly discover their social nature and limit themselves to create a more balanced society? Well, if you look at large companies in history, there is no such evidence that something like this happens by itself. So, in principle, how to go on? What does government do and what do citizens do to create a more balanced society. There is one core problem with this. If we outsource the government services, and if those explains this over and over again. You know, society has everyone. Also the most difficult ones, the ones with health problems, the ones with social problems, with financial problems, the most demanding ones. This is the reason why private sector doesn't want all the clients. But you know, government and society, we have everyone. So before we venture into a future of disconnected services because they were not profitable enough, or before we receive our tap water from a company we didn't vote for in the first place and we cannot get rid of later on, it's well to take a look what government and citizens can do to take a stand in network society. Currently, the network economy, economy companies heavily engage in political campaigning. If you remember the Uber button, Uber, they had a button in their app where you could send a complaint to your mayor about some regulation. The mayor receives thousands of complaints and gives in. It so happened in New York and it's just one example. So I ask you, is this democracy or is this abusing democracy? Could really everyone get involved? I mean, it's no doubt that this is good for investors, investors but is this also in the interest of society overall? Are people making informed decisions here? or were they used? Now, no need for depression. We just need, need to figure out what we can do. So, what can be done? So, in order to work well in network society, 
government must disrupt itself and become a network themselves. So how can this go? Government policies often lack endorsement. So here exactly at this point, collaboration and networks come in. But please don't imagine participation like uh, 7,000 people gathering in some conference hall to argue about some policies. Real participation is co-creation. You know? So co-creation is where you gather for real-life projects in real-life government environments with real people. And something that comes out is also really happening in your life and in our life. So this way citizens can start getting together, co-creating their own future and considering more than just corporate interest. All this comes down to my third point that I want to offer to you. And my third point is we need more democracy, not less democracy, but more democracy. Barack Obama said in his recent speech at the DNC, democracy is not the spectators forum. I couldn't agree more. It's not enough to go vote and then to sit back and maybe complain. So how can we prepare for this, for this future? So in addition to rethinking government, we can actually give democracy an update as well. We essentially need to move from the current representative democracy to a truly participative democracy, democracy 4.0, if you so wish. What do I mean by this? You often hear, you know, we need to prepare for the future that is coming. There is no such thing like a set future that is being rolled out. The future needs to be made. And if we don't make it, someone else will. And then we'll be, we will be their slaves. Let this sink in and then decide, not if, but where you are going to participate. Take action in these real government projects. Avoid the purely online one. They only convey to you, we don't actually want to talk to you. Go there where real people meet after some online fora. This is important, but go there where real people work. You want an example? Like the city of Vienna, they developed their digital strategy together with citizens, and citizens even collaborated in follow-up projects. One example. So, one reservation. Pure grassroots, like people without strategic leadership, doesn't work. Outperformed by strategy every time. So what to do? There is something called negotiation power. So the negotiation power of private sector is clearly visible. And now citizens can rid themselves of government in an idealistic or maybe naive attempt to rid themselves of being governed, only to find themselves governed by Google, Facebook and Amazon instead. So, and then realizing, oh, we just abolished our negotiation power. And just right after, inequality and um, all the problems in economy will escalate quickly and people may want to strike back. So the idea about this is that network economy and network society is about sharing. And it's not just about sharing economy, it's also about sharing prosperity and sharing government. So this is my point. Can we agree that we manage this transition to a new era without demolishing everything this time? Can we agree to manage this transi transition in a civilized manner this time? Maybe. Maybe because it's 2016? So, 
My suggestion is let's create this new elite, the elite of the people who take action for the common good. Cohesion, so solidarity and responsibility will be what we need to claim our future. So we are all government. We will manage the network age. Welcome to our world. <laughs>